There are some things in this world that will never die, and that is the love and admiration for classic designs. From vintage guitars, antique cameras, ancient architecture, and if you're watching Machina, well, at least for some of you, old school motorcycles. However, while some people can appreciate these fine lines from the past, some just can't deal with old technology, the whole restoration process, and dealing with breakdowns from time to time. Good thing nowadays we can have the best of both worlds, the coolness of the past and the reliability of the present. Welcome to Machina Moto Features. I heard of this brand entering the country during the pandemic. These fine folk fundamentally started out as custom bike builders from Birmingham, England. Cut a long story short, they wanted to mix in the old with the new. They wanted classic custom looking bikes with the dependability and know-how of present day technology. Enter Mutt Motorcycles. <laughs> For the Mutt Motorcycle debut here in Machina, we have the GTSS 250. If you watch Machina a lot, you would know that there is a special place in my moto heart for custom classic looking bikes. I mean, that's why we do Moto Builds Filipinas every year, right? Now, I must admit, when I first laid eyes on the GTSS 250, I got excited. Not particularly with how it looks, I mean, off the shelf, yes, it looks great, but more from a custom point of view. One's imagination can fly on where one can take this bike with Mutt already giving you a fantastic base to work on. The engine is an air-cooled, fuel-injected four-stroke thumper dishing out 21 horses and 18 newton meters of torque. This engine is derived from the highly venerated Suzuki GN motor. That engine is bomb-proof. Some people might say my life is in a rut I'm quite happy with what I got People might say that I should stop for more But I'm so happy I can see that something's happening here today A show of strength with your boys' brigade And I'm so happy and you're so kind You want more money, of course I don't mind Super nuclear textbooks for atomic crimes And the public gets what the public but I want nothing to society. Here's what also made the GTSS 250 a delight to look at. It's got 18 inch wheels. Of course, this would affect the acceleration. Then again, you're not buying this to make your balls go up to your throat, right? There are other bikes for that. The proportion and how the bike rolls on 18s, it looks cool and right. Another advantage of 18s for longer rides would of course be its stability. We got five gears here, twin shocks, CNC valve covers, very 70s if I may say, a CNC oil filler cap, CNC headlight brackets, satin aluminum fork caps, black anodized handlebar clamps, stainless steel exhaust, aluminum mud guards. I mean, all these little details are what's making the GTSS special. It's these little things that add up to its old school vibe. Ah uh, yes, here we are, it is the black Black Metal from Birmingham. The Black Metal. Ja, 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 ja. Okay, so this model is called the GTSS 250. This retails for 250,000 pesos. Kulay po natin dito is gloss black white. Classic lines through and through. One of the differences that I would say that uh, this bike would have with other bikes that you would see on the street with the sidecar is um, the chassis construction is definitely different compared to those. I mean, the welds, the construction of the chassis, it's stiff, it's solid, and it's not gonna be twisting here and there. You can feel the difference right away when you ride this versus those smaller displacement 150cc backbone bikes that similarly looks like this. Very, very different. Those will twist more. This one, not so much. Now, in terms of little details here and there, nice touch on uh, the grips that we have here. This is really, really good. I would also commend the handlebars of Mutt Motorcycles. This is pretty good quality. Finish is really, really nice. And you got Mutt Motorcycles written on the handlebar. Black metal from Birmingham. <laughs> quality is all right. I would say in terms of construction and appeal and how 
this would relate to other bikes right now. It's like this bike has a good mix of what we have from the old. If you've ridden really good bikes from the 70s, you would go back memory lane if you know how, how those bikes run and how those bikes feel, but in a modern setting. So I would say that that's a good thing because you know you have modern sensibilities, I mean improvements in manufacturing, efficiency and all of that, but yet still keeping the old right the old feel with the new one of the pluses here i'd say signal cnc machine look at that this is pretty good quality what i would do to change this bike if i were to mod it according to my tastes i would black out all the shiny parts like for example i'm gonna black out this one i'm not a big fan of shiny headlights but i'm gonna make this black i'm gonna keep this silver this silver but anything chromey i'm gonna turn black i'm gonna hit this black I want shocks that would be black. And of course for the headlight, nice touch on your uh, grill for the headlights. Now in terms of quality from the side, this is what I'm saying. Some people might brush it off like, ah, it's a standard, you know, backbone. I mean, tricycles have this blah, blah. No, 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 look, this, this is really good quality metal. It's thick, it's robust. This is also pretty good quality. Our pegs over here, this one is also good quality. All these little pieces are really, really thought out and made well. All right, so let's take a look at what's here. So that's the battery. It says Guyu CMF9. So layout is clean. These are the things that I like looking at. It gives us a look into how, you know, manufacturers take care of their innards, you know? So that's, that's very, very neat. And on the other side, it's going to be our air filter. Again, it's very neat. You don't have like, you know, wires popping out in the cracks or anything like that. So it's done well. Also, maybe it's something I would modify here. I feel like the side stand is a bit short. Maybe if we could make this a bit longer. So I don't know. I just feel like it's about to fall. <laughs> Now, in terms of ride and feel of this whole bike, it is gonna be on the weighty side. And this is where I think I would appreciate this more as a bike that I can use for long distances. I've been riding this around town and it's been pretty comfortable for me. The foam that we have here is pretty generous. You can see how my thumb is really going down there. If you're a guy, the support for your bed logs are fine. If you're a girl, it doesn't apply, but it's still comfortable. Long rides, the seat, no problem. Another highlight of this, of course, this is the detail that I like, machined also. That's a plus, I wouldn't change that anymore. That's great. Another detail that I like, this one. Nice detail, nice detail. Harness, pretty neat. Everything's strapped, um, although maybe if this went through under here, so it's not over there, so it's hidden, so it's gonna be a clean look, you know? Uh, little things like that. This one is uh, pretty straight up. They mix analog and digital. I like how it's really nice and small. So as a matter of perspective, here's my Chinellas check. So Chinellas, that's how small that is. Chinellas check on the seat, size 11. One, two slippers, size 11. Lights are not LED, and for a bike like this, I'm okay with that. Uh, these are our brakes. Very bright. Now for the mirrors, I will change this. I'm not a big fan of... Uh, a uh, shook shook. It's either shook or shook. Bar and mirrors would also be good. Ah, fender is metal, so plus points on this one. It's not plastic. Now let's take a listen. So that sounds pretty good. Another plus point on how this thing is laid out and how it looks. This side, where you would normally see the pipe, it's actually on the left side. It's cut where this part meets the wheel. So your pipe only goes as far as that. And for me, that is very, very cool. And uh, with how I rode it, it didn't feel like it was Songao. So I don't know how they tuned this, but it, it's performing fine. The good thing about putting um, the pipe on the other side and it's short, it makes the whole bike just, you know, clean very very clean looking 
The bike drives 140 kgs. It's slightly heavier than other 250cc bikes out there. In handling it, you will feel the heft of its 18-inch wheels in relation to its rake angle. So don't expect to win many Gymkhana competitions on this bike, unless you're all using GTSS 250s. But for touring and long rides, this bike is excellent. At my weight of 77 kgs, I got 36.309 kpl, riding this in a very spirited way. Pretty good for its weight and power, and with a 15 liter tank, you can really go out there. Oomcha, oomcha, oomcha. We're gonna try the brakes. God save the queen. Uh, fastest regime. Do, 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 do. All right. Now, you guys know of my bias towards classic looking bikes, therefore, I am kind of more forgiving. <laughs> with classic looking bikes. Eh, hey, what can I do? You know, I'm only human. I'm not a robot that just judges things with no feeling, with no emotion, without taking into consideration the philosophy be behind the design, the heritage, the culture, the tradition, and all that. Nevertheless, we're gonna be careful. <laughs> we're gonna start with the rear. I'm gonna try my best to get some fishtail action out of this. There, see? I didn't fishtail, I didn't lose my rear end, it's not locking. Okay. To be expected, you know, I'm not expecting a lot of stopping power with, uh, with the black metal from Birmingham with this particular motorcycle. But it is stopping okay, it's not locking and that's, that's good. Okay, so let's move on to the front now. Okay, not losing it at all, stopping okay. And mind you, I'm really gripping it hard already. Yep, of course I'm not going to go crazy and really max it out and try to get myself into trouble. I'm trying to just brake as, you know, in normal day-to-day -day situations. Especially in our country, when sometimes dogs just cross the street, you know, stuff like that. Did not happen, pa? Alrighty. Did you see that? They check me out, man. They check out the bike. Those guys know what a good looking bike looks like. The front brakes, no issue, nothing. No skid, no nothing. It's just stopping and stopping fine. Okay, let's try both brakes right now. Both brakes. Okay, so I'm expecting that if your brakes in the rear are just performing or giving this much power, like it, it gives a six out of 10, and then you got your front brakes that are giving maybe eight or nine out of 10, Okay, yeah, definitely it's stopping sooner than if I was just using the front brakes. Like right now, this front brakes, yeah, okay, so, but I just wish it would stop even even sooner. I feel that with both brakes, it, it can. Okay, so because of my being more forgiving <laughs> with classic bikes, it's just, why not? it's just how I am, I'd say, um, this ex exceeded my expectations. I was ex I was expecting the brakes to perform lesser, actually. <laughs> you know those old BMW R50s? Those things take forever to stop. They, they, they slow down and rely a lot on inertia <laughs> to help you slow down. I mean, it's an old bike, right? I wasn't expecting this bike, of course, to perform like, you know, those old brakes, but um, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised. I mean, I, I must say the, you know, despite the classic looks, you can still rely on some new tech trickling into this bike. The brakes are okay. If, again, if there's like a little improvement that they can maybe do, is that if I'm doing both brakes, maybe even tune it a bit so that I can even stop even even sooner. Motorcycles. Black metal from Birmingham. Yeah. There is many to like in the Mutt GTS S250, priced at 250k for the 250cc version and 185k for the 125cc version. I'd say they would be priced appropriately, considering you're getting really nice bits and pieces here and there as I pointed out earlier, with a really good engine design to boot. What's good to note also, if you're out to buy one, make sure to haggle. According to the dealer, yes, they give discounts. 
I guess depending on the time of year. There is no perfect bike out there, and with the GTS S250, we discovered that if you have a pillion for a total combined weight of 150 kgs for two riders, you will see your rear tires scraping the rear fender when you hit bumps. So one of the things that we noticed over here is with a pillion ride, with two people over there, but with a pillion, this is gonna tend to dip, and I got some marks over here already because I mean, if it's riding straight with no bumps, no problem, it's not going to hit. But if you're going to get into some bumps and some um, dips here and there with the road, the fender is going to start hitting this already. So just so you know. I mean, for straight, smooth, flat roads, your shocks and rear tire will be fine. But yeah, in our country, that just doesn't exist. I'd say this is due to either two things, the 18 inch wheels or the shocks. You can keep the shocks and go down to 17s or keep the 18s and change shocks. Me? I'm gonna go for looks, of course, and keep the 18s and just sort the shocks. It's an easy fix, actually. Also, this would really only matter if you have a pillion with you all the time. Riding solo, as is, no problem. Another little suggestion of mine since Mutt is into combining the old and the new, I think connectivity with a mobile device would be cool. That means we can keep the gauge old school and simple and load up on lots of data from engine performance metrics, navigation, fuel, etc. That way we can keep the bike looking classy and sassy while having the benefit of modern day tech dumped and managed by your phone. All in all, I'm happy that Mutt Motorcycles went through this route. Sure, many established brands have gone the neo-classic way, but for some people, those kind of look too new with a bit of old laced around it. With Mutt Motorcycles, it's the other way around. It's primarily a classic looking bike with new tech supporting it. Also, Mutt is every bit Brit and legit as English bikes go. They're from Birmingham, England. The culture and heritage of good old custom bikes, that spirit is barking loud in these mutts. Welcome to our country. This is Zach from Machinamoto Features. Ciao.